Hi, welcome to the video. We'll be looking at how to use the web view inside of Flutter. So the first thing we need to do is in order to get this to work on iOS before anything else, we need to head over to the info.plist. That's inside the iOS slash runner folder. And if we scroll down to the bottom, we can add a new key and value. We need to add the key of io.flutter.embedded underscore views underscore preview and the value of that equal to yes. Without doing this, it won't work on iOS. You may find that you also have to do this for things like Google Maps and others. Next, we'll head over to the pubspec.yaml. And this is where we can add the webview underscore flutter dependency. I haven't put a version number for this, but if you wanted to add a version number, you can. If you omit the version number, it'll simply take the latest version of this plugin. As this is simply a demo, we're gonna leave the version number for now. Now inside of main.dart, we can add a web view. And that web view comes from the web view underscore flutter package that we just installed. And we can import that by hitting command period on the red line. This will open up the import window. We can hit enter. And now this gives us our web view. Right now it's not necessarily anything because we don't have an initial URL. Let's give the web view an initial URL. We've set this to google.com. And what we'll also do now is set up a completer. So let's make a final completer. Now this comes from Dart async. So we'll import that. And we'll make this of type web view controller. Call this underscore completer. Or underscore controller. And we'll set this equal to simply a new completer of web view controller. Then when our web view has been created, we can hook into the on web view created and we can say web view controller. And we'll simply call this web view controller. And we can simply head over to the controller and complete that promise. If we restart our application, we can now see the Google homepage. Because we're using the on web view created and this promise, we can now go ahead and create a floating action button. The floating action button will give us a way to interact with the web view. So let's make simply a floating action button with the child of an icon. And we'll simply just put this to any icon right now. The AC unit will do. And when this is pressed, we want to do something. So we'll wrap this in what's known as a future builder. This will unwrap that completer, so we can say future builder, type web view controller. We'll set the future equal to that controller dot future. We'll cut this floating action button for now. And the builder here will give us the build context, and then it will give us the async snapshot of our web view controller. simply call this one controller and then we can return well first we'll check to see whether we have any data so we'll see whether the promise has resolved using has data if it has then we can return that floating action button that we spoke of before otherwise we can simply return a container for now now we can do whatever we want inside of this floating action button but for now I'm just simply going to say controller dot data and as you can see we have a variety of different functions here we can check to see whether we can go back forward etc but we're just going to load a url and the url that we're going to load is simply the youtube channel so now if we select that ac we should initially have the google homepage but if we select this this will give us a way to interact with our web view and as you can see this has now taken us to youtube but this does bring up one problem. As you can see right now, it doesn't actually work. We have this sort of spinner, we have this card, but we have no YouTube. And that's because we need to enable the unrestricted JavaScript mode. So on the web view, we can add a property here called JavaScript mode, and we'll allow using JavaScript mode.unrestricted the JavaScript to be 
essentially not restricted by the web view. If we restart this, and of course we select the fab button once more, we should now be able to see the YouTube channel, and of course the JavaScript will be loaded. So this is how we use the web view essentially, this is how you get up and running, this is how you can interact with it using external components such as this fab button right here, or anything else that you want to add to this screen. I hope you found it useful, if you have, let me know inside the comments, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you soon in my next video. Bye.